Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Pre-Accident Podcast Safety Moment for Managers. This is a special little pre-accident podcast. Got a lot of feedback. Thanks for all your information and your comments and everything you have to say because it's always good to hear. And one of the pieces of feedback I got is, wouldn't it be great if these were short enough we could use them with, uh, with workers and with managers as a part of our safety brief, our uh, safety moment, our operational excellence moment, our OE moment, whatever you guys call them. That's a pretty good suggestion, and so I thought I'd try one, and so that's what today's all about. This is going to be the pre-accident investigation safety moment for leaders. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is the Pre-Accident Safety Moment for Leaders, and I'm Todd Conklin. Thanks for listening. You know, the difference between success and failure is oftentimes a strategic management decision. Now, that's going to sound crazy, especially on the back of the idea that accidents are a big part of what you manage, and it's a huge part of what you count and track. And quite honestly, it's what you're held accountable. As a leader, you know, I don't have to tell you, that you're pretty much one sprained ankle away from being the worst safety manager in the company. But I want to challenge you today on how we look at success and failure because sometimes that is a choice you make. And many times, unfortunately, I think it's a choice that's made emotionally. And that's what we want to sort of tackle today. And we want to tackle it by listening to a story. So let me tell you a little tiny story. I was working with a group of operations people, uh, and we were having a big training session, a big kind of get-together, and it was the fundamental side of this discussion. So it was a pretty early discussion on the new view of safety, and we'd done really well. It had been a really good class. And partially through the class, one of the senior leaders in the room got a little bit upset around the notion of holding workers accountable. And in order to illustrate his need to have control – And to be able to dictate and determine accountability, he told a story. And it's interesting because this story changed the direction of the class. It was was pretty dramatic. And here's what he said. He was actually in charge of an operation, big operation. And a part of that operation, one of the things they do was load boats. They load vessels. And they were loading vessels with super sacks. Now, I don't know if you guys know what super sacks are, but they're great, big, huge bags that have four loops on the top. You've probably seen them on the back of trucks. In fact, they're a great thing to, to carry gravel, uh, loose rocks, anything that's heavy and doesn't really want to be rigged very easily. Like, for instance, sand. Sand is hard to rig individually. You put it in a super sack, and you loop those super sack loops. There's four of them over the crane hook. And voila, the pig is ready. The load will even itself. They're super safe, they're super reliable, and they work great. So they were using these super sacks to load these uh, big coils of cable that were heavy and awkward and probably relatively hard to rig. And I'll bet you, although he didn't say this, I'll bet you the super sacks were a huge efficiency and made the process a lot simpler and therefore made loading the vessels much quicker And quite honestly, if you push me, probably much safer. So they're loading these super sacks, and the vessel loading is going great. And they get to the last load, and instead of looping the super sack loops over the crane hook, for some reason, they take a piece of nylon rope, they tie the four loops of the super sack together, and then they tie the end of that nylon rope to the crane hook. So they've kind of rigged the super sack, but they've rigged it in a way that's really unusual. They go and do the lift, they do the pick, they lift it up, they swing it out to put it on the vessel, and they swing it through a barricaded crane lift safety area. So the area where the lift is going to be held is barricaded. There's nobody under the load. They're monitoring the load. They're supervising the barricaded area. And as they swing it across to put it on the vessel, the nylon rope breaks and the load falls And it falls to the ground, and it hits no one, but they dropped a load. And so this guy's telling the story, and he says, I am in a position where I have to hold those guys accountable because they made a choice. And I asked one question, and it's the very same question I'm going to ask you. Is that an example of a success, or is that an example of a failure? 
Now, there's not really an answer, <laughs> and you could say either it's a failure because they dropped a load, or it's a success because they dropped it onto bare ground and nobody died. You could tell me it's a, it's a near miss or a good catch or a near loss or whatever your company calls it, but I want to tell you that really it's a choice. That if you choose to see that as a success, then what you're going to talk about is the fact that a load fell and you're going to have some opportunities to learn there. And that's a pretty interesting failure because I'm still to this day, even as I tell this story, kind of curious how this load fell. But what you're going to talk about is the fact that our barricades work, our workers respect them, we supervise them, they're there for a reason, and aren't we glad they're there? If you see this as a failure, then you're going to get the opportunity to punish the crane company. You're certainly going to get an opportunity to punish the person who did the rigging because that's a weird rigging no matter how you look at it. And you're probably going to get the opportunity to punish the supervisor because the supervisor is just hanging out there waiting to get punished, and why not? And you're going to get a chance to probably march a contractor off the site. And you may believe deep down in your soul that you get some deterrence value that no one will ever do that again because, gosh, that's stupid, and why would you want to do that again? The bottom line is it's a choice, and it's a strategic leadership choice you're going to make, and you're often going to make this choice in the heat of the moment, in seconds, and colored with emotional context. But what I tell you as leaders is that what's interesting to me is how much of a choice that is. And how, in fact, you have the opportunity to either learn and improve or blame and punish. But in this example, you can really see where you probably aren't going to get to do both. If you blame and punish, then the whole idea that your barricades were respected and robust and rotund and effective and they worked sort of gets lost in the noise. If you learn and improve, you really have sort of given up the opportunity to march the contractor off the site, never to see that contractor, that supervisor, that rigger again. It's a choice, and the choice is yours to make. And I would highly encourage you to make your peace pretty early with the fact that safety and failure are incredibly similar. The only thing that really dictates the difference between safety and failure is outcome. And safety, as a rule, is not the opposite of Failure, safety is the presence of safeguards. And failure, as a rule, is not the opposite of success. It's actually a vital part of success. That's our challenge for today. That's our safety moment. Just some things to think about, but nonetheless, I think they're very important things for you to consider. This is the Pre-Accident Podcast. This is a safety moment. I'm Todd Conklin. If you get a chance, sign up for this. I'd love it if you joined us every week or so and tell your friends. That always makes a difference. Until then, go out there, have some fun, learn a lot, and be safe. (laughs) 